how much film study and research do you really have to do against a team like Cleveland that you have played in the final? This team has played in the finals before. You you kind of knew going in you were likely to play. Do you have to like restart everything, or is there such a familiarity that maybe you don't have to start it? You know, day one with this team. No, you know we we, we do. We watch both games from the regular season. Uh, gone back and watched some from last year going to playoffs. I know Steve watched all all of the games from last year's finals. Um, and, and then you know obviously we watched uh, their their uh, games from the Boston series. And then you know you watch them throughout the course of their playoff run, but you mainly take away from what they did in the, in the Boston series in terms of the current current playoff run. Mike, you're, you're going to end up being a big part of this story. Are you, how do you feel about that? Are you comfortable with that? Mike Brown's return in the finals to Cleveland? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things I have no control over. It is what it is, and just kind of take it in stride. You know? Did the, did the coaching staff get together to watch that game? Uh, yeah, that game? yeah, we watched uh, we watched the game together last night here. When yeah. NBA coaches are, are watching a game like that together, like if, if we were to see a video of that, is, is it like – Super analytical, like breaking stuff, or, or, or like the rest of us saying, "Oh, damn, look what LeBron is doing." Well, I mean, I was, I was like sitting in the back like this, and eating my pizza, <laughs> drinking my apple juice. I <laughs> think Steve was laying on the couch. I think CD was over in the corner every once in a while. He was on his cell phone. Ron was up there, really analytical, <laughs> coach. You know, so it was like kind of mixed bags of of personalities in a room watching the game and. Every once in a while, somebody would say something, and then we go down that path for a little bit, and then we get back to watching the game and move on. So it's just kind of talk as you kind of go along. You sure it was just apple juice? <laughs> <laughs> any any I, mixture? I, 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 I plead the fifth. <laughs> right? Teams playing so much against each other in the NBA. Uh, I just like to say the NFL, where you get to the Super Bowl, right. played the Cavs. They, they played you. I, you know, I, usually at this time of the year, there's there aren't many surprises, you know, and I, I truly believe you you got to have players in this league to win. And I said this yesterday or the day before, and so you know, a, a lot of it during the course of the game is going to be determined by the players, and your players execute and try to keep the game simple and play hard every possession. And at the end of the day. You know, the better team's going to win in that regard. But uh, I don't think we'll be able to trick them, and I don't think they'll be able to trick us. It's, you know, because they know what's coming, and we know what's coming. How much better do you think these two teams are than they were last year, given the additions? Uh, obviously, been together a little bit longer, but KD, they've added some players as well. Yeah, I, I think both teams are a lot better. And not, not only that, you know, again, both teams went through it last year to a certain degree, and and so just the experience alone for the guys that were on the roster, I think, helps out more than anything else. You mentioned not, you know, fantastic the storyline, you return to Cleveland, but have you in your talk in the last few days, few weeks, kind of uh, laughed a little about the twist of fate that you, know, you are going to be coaching against the Cavaliers? I mean, it's not the, not the I mean, it's, it's all over the place. It's not something that I can hide from or yeah. run from. And I, all I said, it is what it is. I don't, I don't have any control over what the storyline is going to be. Uh, it, it's it's a little it's a little ironic that you know things happen in life this way. And uh, I was talking to my boys about it, and it's just you know it's one of those things, especially in the NBA. It's like it's like the Lion King. It's just a circle of life. You know how everything just kind of keeps getting back or revolving back to where it once was, and just kind of take it in stride. And you know whatever happens, happens. LeBron's probably as sweet and nice as any athlete. On the yeah. Does your familiarity with him, uh, is it any kind of advantage that other coaches wouldn't have, or is there just like no secrets about this guy? No, I, I don't think so. I, you know, he's, like you said, he's been scrutinized from day one, top to bottom, inside out. And I mean, I, I don't know more about LeBron than what Steve does. And, you know, obviously I coach him, so there's, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more that I may know on his on his personal side about him, but in terms of him as a basketball player, no, everybody has knowledge of what he can do on the floor. And, you know, he's he's played very well. It seems like every year his his game has gotten better. I think this is the best in the world. Yes. Yeah. How about the 
No, it's you know it's it's a factor, you know, because he was already one of the greatest in, in the world to ever play the game, and you know, and a guy keeps getting better. I used to say that when I coached him, you know, people would say, well, do you think LeBron has peaked out? Or no, 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 the guy can get better. There are a lot of ways that he can get better, and, and he has. Well, I mean, one of the things, and we talked about this, is the shooting. You know, I know I'm really dating myself, but in 2007, when we played San Antonio, every pick and roll that LeBron ran, I don't care if the screen was set, you know, 15 feet below where the ball was, they were going under the pick and roll. And, uh, you know, he wasn't as confident in his shot back then. Even you know a little later on, I think in 2013 when San Antonio played them, they were going under the pick and roll. You know you got to be careful going under the pick and roll against him now because if you do, he'll make you pay. And not just with one or two threes, but he's liable to run off four or five threes in a row if, if you disrespect his shooting ability. When guys have days off and you give the team a day off, do you encourage them to completely unplug and do something that kind of gets their mind out faster? This, this is a funny part about so Steve is really good at that uh, he calls it get what you need. And, you know, th this group's a veteran group and extremely responsible. Uh, and so a lot of times some guys might need to get away from it completely, you know, because that's their mental makeup. Other guys may just need the routine of coming into the gym and getting a few shots up just to get themselves going or making sure that they stay in the right uh, uh, frame of mind. So, you know, it's, it's up to each individual more so than trying to lump everybody into one, you know, common thing. How well rested is this group feel right now? Yeah, we, we've had two pretty good days of practice. You know, we feel like the, the group is pretty sharp. Uh, they feel good about themselves, so hopefully we can continue on the upswing. Coach, Bob probably has the most shooters on his team that he's ever had in his career. Yeah. How do you scheme for that balance of win to allow you? guys to probably go one on one and not spot the rotations on the those guys open. You know, just force them to the to the basket or send it help and send it, you know, leaving guys open. How do you do that basket? Well, I mean anytime in this league, especially with this team, because the shooters that they have, anytime you can you know stay with your man. So for instance if they're playing a pick and roll, if you can handle a pick and roll in a two on two situation, then it's best because as soon as you come to help at any given time with the ball in LeBron's hands, he's finding the open shooter. And like you said, they, they have knockdown shooters. And, you know, if you allow them to get looks from, from the three-point line, they become a very, very dangerous team. So hopefully, you know, we won't have to help as much. And, you know, at the end of the day, they'll have to shoot and or score twos. And, and uh if we take care of the ball, stay locked in defensively, you know, maybe that's to our advantage if they're scoring twos as opposed to making threes. With Love made basically their backup center, does that possibly change your center rotation or at least the minutes that you're giving those guys? It could. A lot of it is going to depend on who's on the floor for them. You know, because Love may be their backup center, but you've seen us in the past. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to put our center on him. When Ron talked about he said it a number of times that not necessarily sees himself as a shooter first, but more of a facilitator. Yeah. How do you see him? I mean, because obviously his ability to get to the rim, to do whatever he wants offensively, is one of the best in the game. But he does often look for that pass first. How do you see him? No, you know, it's funny. He, he, a lot of people compare, you know, him to Kobe and to Michael. And I, I, I kind of compare him to Magic, you know, because he wants to – pass first if he can but but you know again he's he's not magic he he might be in the middle of those two groups because he can score if need be uh, but if you think about magic not only can magic get his guys easy looks but when he needed to score he could score you know and so that's how I compare LeBron more to when you're trying to talk about style of game and and he's right uh, he wants to pass first and uh, pass second, but if he needs to score or if he needs to shoot, he can do those things too, and that's what makes him so dangerous. And you know, when you have a guy that likes to pass like him at his size, it makes it difficult on the defense because no matter what you throw at him, he's looking over the top of your defense. It's almost like 
you know, quarterback. You know, if you got a guy Doug Flutie size, he's going to have a little bit more problems in the NFL than a guy that's, you know, Peyton Manning size, 6'4", 6'5". And you can see over the top of the defense. Same thing in basketball. If you got a, a point guard, which LeBron is more than capable of being, you double team him or you send the body in him, he's looking right over the top of the defense and he's finding whoever he needs to find for an easy look. Mike, I think we could all guess what your short-term goal is right now. Long-term, do you want to be a head coach again in this league? Uh, eventually, you know. Um, I think almost everybody that coaches in this league at, at some point, whether they've done it or not, uh, wants the opportunity again. But again, for me, it's, it's not anything that I'm necessarily thinking about. If it happens, it happens. You know, I, I feel like one of, the, one of my attributes is being patient. And if it works out great, if it doesn't, then I'm, I'm enjoying it here. You're not thinking about what this postseason run might be able to do No, I mean, we've had a good run so far, but it's not over. And so I just, you know, maybe maybe when it's done, I might reflect back on it a little bit more. Has this experience rejuvenated you at all in any way, just being part of this organization with Steve, you know, top of bottom, Bob Myers? I mean, sometimes, you know, you go through a lot of tough little twists and turns in a career, and you reach a point where it's like it kind of refreshes you. I mean, it's part of it, but, you know, my first year out, my youngest boy was a senior in high school, and, so I knew I wasn't going to do anything. Uh, I, I just wanted to hang around him and watch him play football and basketball. And so that's what I did. I stayed in Cleveland, and I went to those games and went to all the team meals and all that other stuff and had a fantastic time. And then uh, you know, I'd say, if anything rejuvenated me, it was spending last year down in San Antonio. You know, spent most of the year down there. And, and then even bouncing out to New Mexico to watch my son play and being around hoops more than what I was a year before. This definitely has added to it because, you know, just the quality of people in the organization and, you know, how well they work together. They don't always agree, but at the end of the day, you know that everybody has everybody's back. And, you know, at times that's, that's hard to find in any business. So Steve went through all their games, seven games last year. Yeah. What was his general summary of those seven games? I mean, just just like probably Cleveland felt, you know, there, there were instances where they could have could have played better, you know. And the biggest thing was, oh, at, at times he felt they got sloppy with the ball, which 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 could have cost them, you know. And then you know, watching how they defended certain actions and who they put on who, you know, he may change this or that, you know, going forward, but. Uh, just, just feeling like they could have played better in general. Mike, you've talked about how happy you are here. Is it a situation where you could actually see yourself maybe even turning down a certain head coaching opportunity depending on what it was to stay here? Yes. Because <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right, thank you, Mike. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, guys.